Yo, what's cracking, everyone? Eric Ship Triple One here with expansion two just around the corner. Many of us Horizon 4 players are excited as to what playground games have in store for us. Many rumors have been circulating around as to what it could be, and the biggest one so far is a Lego expansion. Of course, this is by no means confirmed at all. It's just a website writing an article about it. Could very well be fake. Bottom line is no one really knows apart from the team themselves. And to get hyped up about the upcoming DLC, I want to take a trip down memory lane and we will be going through, in my opinion, two of the very best expansion packs in the entire series and basically the ideal benchmark to reach in Forza Horizon 4. So let's take a look at the first one from Forza Horizon 3, the Hot Wheels expansion. When this first got announced, I remember I was thrilled about having Hot Wheels. Not a fibre of my being actually doubted that this expansion would be bad, as all I was imagining was orange loops everywhere around either a portion of the Australian map created by Playground Games or on a small island. And I wasn't wrong, as many others weren't either, because you see, we always classed the Horizon game as somewhat of an arcade racer with very good physics, almost dipping its toes into the simulation realm. So with that said, how will a car react or behave when you are literally upside down in a proper car instead of a toy car? We were all extremely curious and surprisingly, it was a lot more tamer than I had actually imagined, but I'm going off on a tangent. Basically what I'm saying is, is that Playground Games made a huge gamble to partner up with Hot Wheels and it worked as it was unique and the Hot Wheels, no matter what age, we are intrigued by all of their custom fantasy cars and all of their built tracks as well. Then there is the actual map execution. Now looking at the map itself, it doesn't actually look that big, but because this map doesn't just rely on horizontal planes, but layers upon layers, of orange roads experiencing the map in a car feels a lot bigger than what it actually is. The experience is just so foreign that the excitement overwhelms any other emotion. You're not limited to driving on the Hot Wheels road either as you can go off-roading in the sand dunes or ocean which gives the map an extra layer of exploration and overall it just makes for great racing. As you can see I haven't even completed the Hot Wheels expansion myself not because I thought it was bad, but I was actually having so much fun just racing with my friends and subscribers on tracks provided by the expansion. Since everyone started on the same even playing ground, no one really had an advantage as to how to race on these Hot Wheels circuits. Racing through loops, getting punted off the circuit, and flying through the air from the speed booster was honestly something I believe will be hard for playground games to replicate. With so many different races to choose from, all with the same racing customizations as if you were on the main map itself, you could set some of the most intriguing races with your friends. Oh, did I mention that this entire map could also be competed in an online adventure? But that's really got to do with the game itself, doesn't it? Horizon 4. And lastly, let's take a look at the new cars that also was included in the expansion. Four cars were Hot Wheels exclusive, including the Twin Mill, Mustang, Rip Rod, and the Bone Shaker, and the other six were non-Hot Wheels related, however, did include the returning Pagani Zonda R, and also the brand new Zenvo ST1. A new tyre compound was also added, essentially the same as the race tyre, but instead of the white lettering which says Forza, it now just has a red ring around the inner lip as an extra choice. Overall, this was a great expansion and I believe most people who purchased it enjoyed the heck out of it like myself and considering it was launched in May 2017, if we count the calendar for this year's Horizon, we should already have expansion 2 by now. And moving on from Hot Wheels, let's take a look at what the absolute best expansion ever was in the Horizon series, and that is Forza Horizon 2 Presents Fast and Furious. There are so many reasons to love about this expansion, but honestly, it's even debatable if this is an expansion to Forza Horizon 2, as it was a standalone game, completely separate to the main game itself. 
the career mode was new, you could join multiplayer lobbies like you could in the main Horizon 2 game, and most importantly, this was all entirely free. Releasing in March 2015, just six months after the launch of Forza Horizon 2, the Fast and Furious franchise and Playground Games decided to partner up and create its own spin-off game totally exclusive to Horizon 2 which meant the intro screen, loading screen, garage, amongst many other aspects were different. There even is a slight blue cinematic filter in the game, which makes you feel like you're a part of the movie. When you first load up the game, you will notice that the map has been heavily restricted, making it significantly smaller than the actual map in Horizon 2, but it still has all the key components, such as a nice city, a long motorway, and even a full one mile drag strip that we are still missing in Horizon 4. So it certainly is enough to get a good grasp on how the full game is for anyone who has yet to purchase it, almost essentially acting as a demo, with many races to complete, all which we are familiar with in the Horizon series, such as street racing, sprints, and even showcase events. The goal of the career mode is to win race by race to acquire all 10 cars from Furious 7 for the crew. There are a total of 12 cars, most have been modified internally and aesthetically to match their movie counterpart. The only two cars which were left untouched in this game was the McLaren P1 and also the Lamborghini Huracan. The rest of the car list includes Dominic Toretto's Charger and Brian O'Connor's personal white Toyota Supra and also his R35 GTR just to name a few. Unfortunately, none of these cars can be upgraded or painted as, again, I don't think Playground Games would want to give access to everything in a free game, but this quote-unquote expansion does feature something very unique that no other Forza Horizon games have, and that is NOS. Yes, that's right, NOS. How insane is that? Normally, those games are reserved for Need for Speed, but to see it in a Forza game is truly unheard of, and I must say, it really makes the races so much more interesting, and I'm uncertain why it has never made it in any other Horizon title. The NOS feature can only be used in a race and not in free roam, which is a little disappointing. But nonetheless, just hearing the Nitrous release from the car you are driving is just so satisfying. And I just want to quickly talk about the online aspect of this expansion. I actually can't believe that there even is one for an expansion or a free standalone game. You can basically play online similar to the Horizon 2 main game itself, such as online free roam or even private lobbies. And then once you're actually in a lobby, you can start races and try to invite everyone else that is also within the same lobby as you to join, which of course is obviously a lot of fun with NOS as well. Even games such as King and Infection on two separate parts of the map, which is incredible. I mean, for a free standalone game, I actually cannot believe how much content this provides. And what you see on the screen is actually me recording not too long ago that there are still people playing this. Now, granted, we may be the only people that's playing this around the entire world, but the fact that the servers are still online and people are still playing it just shows that there is something here. Now, for those of you guys who maybe got into the Forza Horizon series after Horizon 2 and might be wondering, oh, I want to try this out. Unfortunately, you are not able to download this game anymore as they have taken it off from the Xbox storefront, which I think it's a shame. They should have just kept it on there, but maybe due to licensing reasons that they had to take it off. Thankfully, I did download it, and to be honest, going back to it now, I kind of miss this small little expansion. I wouldn't mind doing a quick playthrough starting from the beginning, but also I'm curious to hear from you guys. What do you think the best expansions were in the Forza Horizon series, whether it's Blizzard Mountain, Storm Island, Fortune Island, whatever it is, and why? E3 is just around the corner. I am excited to hear what Playground Games have installed for us for Forza Horizon 4. And I really hope that Expansion 2 will be as good, if not better, than these two expansions that I have listed. Anyways, if you guys did enjoy this video, please make sure to smash the thumbs up button. That would really help me out. And also, for any 
Forza Horizon 4 content, including news, updates. Make sure to click the subscribe button with notifications turned on. That way you won't ever miss out on another video that goes live. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace.